What's up everyone? This is Richard, I mean Trent at Precision Transmission. We've got Gary Sneeder John's pickup in the, tr in the house today. It's a 08 GMC Sierra 5.3 motor, 4L65E transmission. Came in with a few codes in it, uh, torque converter clutch stuck off, the vehicle barely moved in, no fluid in the pan, I mean, this thing boiled it almost all the way off. There was no leaks or anything. We didn't get to show you R&R &R in it, but this thing was fried. One of the possible reasons was, Cody, can you come here, please? What we did is we noticed this thing did not have a cooler on the front of it. So what we did is we already installed us a nice 1404 Hayden cooler. It is still ran through the radiator and also an external cooler. So. That's gonna be a lot better for this vehicle to where he can get uh, on the road, pull something, and not have to worry about it. But um, other than that, let's go back here and I'm gonna tear down this transmission today. My dad's been working really, really hard. He got his front end today. He's got the old one back there. He's trying to do a little bit of work to that. Um, it's been work, work, work here, guys, no play. So we're trying to get ready and maybe get some winter racing or maybe first of the year next year. Got a Supra here. It's almost done. Uh, got to get a couple things off of it. We ran it down the street a couple times. Works really well. Customer is going to be very happy. But let's get back here and check out this 4L65E. This thing has 138,000 miles on it. As you can see here, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure it's all original. We got some orange marking on it, which is kind of weird. You know, normally you don't see that from the factory. I don't know if this is a junkyard unit or really what it is, but I know it's nasty. So let's get our converter out first. We can tell we don't have any clutch burn on the back here, but if you look at our fluid here. I mean, it's just, it's bad. I'm gonna go get our lockup O-ring off here. You have to pull this off to get the pump out. If not, you're gonna pull your drum and everything out. Let's get the bell housing off. Put it like this kind of where you can see it but I want to be able to push on it at the same time to ensure I get a good hit on that bolt because these are one of the worst bolts you want to strip hope everyone is enjoying their day it's what 40 degrees outside here today cody 50 degrees maybe yeah i think the high today is 43. terrible winter is coming and guess what though this weekend it's going to be 80 degrees can you believe that cold during the week warm for the weekend i can handle that at least we get to go and enjoy it okay we're going to go ahead and get our tail housing off here. I didn't pull the speed sensor out, the output speed sensor, but you can see it. No, no metal really on it. It looks really good. Here you have your yoke seal. People wonder why these things sometimes leak out of the, the rear of the yoke. If this seal gets bad and then the orifice in the yoke gets bad, it will leak and it will actually allow fluid to come out your yoke. So we will replace that as well. Let's see if I can get that out. I pushed it in there. Of course. We won't spend time on that, guys. But there is an O-ring in there. I'm 
We're going to go for our 2 4 band. Couple of rags right here. Start laying some of my parts out. I always like to, sometimes my dad can get them out with uh, out prying on this seal. Me, I just grab that seal. Just stretch it a little bit. You don't have to stretch it a lot. Cover comes right off or sometimes you might get lucky and be able to pry it off yourself. So here's your 2-4 apply. Okay, thing looks really good, not tore up. So we'll scotch brought that really nice and get a good surface on there. Dipstick boot, throw that away. Go ahead and get our, our pump bolts out and we'll flip it over. So Cody said this thing only had maybe half a pan of fluid in it. And when I drove it in to the shop, it would barely move at all. So um, I'm really, really shocked that we even got it in. Are y'all ready? She's pretty bad. Smells even worse. I think it looks bad. You should be here smelling it. I mean, it's filter stopped up. You can definitely tell. I mean, it's, it's just cooked, really cooked. So you can tell here, guys, come here, Cody. Let's uh, check this out together. So we got a 65E, we got our, our reluctor wheel on the inside and our, our sensor here. It actually goes and wires in and it counts the reluctor on the shaft on our... Yeah. Try and get some of these off here. It's hard to work in gloves, everything's slippery. But. So we're going to turn this right here, and if you see here, we've just got this clip, we can grab it, so we can get our solenoid out, we're going to put our clip right back on it, just like that, to where you can get our 10 millimeter bolts out for our lockup valve, our TCC, the electronic part. Here. This is what's supposedly stuck. You should be able to hear, I will clean it up, see what it's like. It's going to be getting a new one, but this should clean up. You should be able to shake this back and forth, and then when we hit it, it should work really well, and it's not. I can tell you that right now. So we're going to lay that to the side. We're going to start getting our valve body off. That's your detent lever there. That's what keeps the, the tension on it. Your click, click, click you hear. Okay, so that's our 13. So we're gonna go for all of our 10s first.
Okay, so you're always going to have this L right here. You're going to have eight, two, or three eight millimeter bolts. They're longer than every bolt in this valve body, and they go in this little L shape. If you put them anywhere else, they can go through, and they can actually touch the internals on the inside. You don't want to do that. So right here, we have our one, two accumulator. Let me get this, uh, I don't even have a spring in it or anything. Uh, there it is. Or it's broken, either or. Oh, no, they just got one little spring in it. So. We'll do some changing on that. Lift it up here to the top. So we'll do some do some tinkering on that. Get all of our bolts out. This is your manifold pressure switch right here on top. This is what tells you what gear it is, different things. It's gonna be covered. This is your late model. It's closed. The ones your early models or your yeah vice versa sorry it's going to be open to where you're going to be able to see the internals the metal gets on the inside of them and they just start having issues so that's the updated one better ones to use all of our bolts there flip this over set it in there nice and smooth we're going to check this right here see if our see if our lockup valve right here has been messed with okay this is what we come here and we block this so it has not been messed with at all can you see down there Cody see down in here mm, a little bit there mm -hmm. you can see that valve moving yes sir okay we're gonna block that to where it doesn't work at all. So what that does is it's a pulse with modulating system. We're gonna to totally block it to where it comes on nice firm. Get all your check balls here. We've got bonded gaskets. Go ahead and just grab my magnet. I'm shaking, a little nervous. It's been a while since I've uh, done a tear down on video. So, and I shake on a daily basis. Add those together. You might shake just a little bit. But we're gonna get our separator plate off of here. Just check it out, make sure all of our holes look really good. And this thing looks really nice, it really does. So we'll get it all cleaned up, change the gaskets, whatever we have to do on this, get it back on. And then we wanna grab our check balls out of here. out of the way and get your detent lever out of the way and this is your your fourth gear accumulator here and we block this stack two pistons couple washers in between you just want to stack it to where it sets flush or just a hair below flush is better but you don't want it stacked above because then it's not going to set down correctly and you're going to have issues we don't want that. Okay. This thing stinks, huh, Cody? Yeah, it was horrible. <laughs> hey, these squeegees are getting down. I don't know who said rubber squeegees don't work, but if you keep them out of the oil, they, uh, after you use them, use them in the oil and get them out of the oil, and they last. We've had these forever, for months, honestly. These just work good. And then if you got a metal, everybody's like, use a metal one. Well, a metal one doesn't scrape so clean. This one works a lot better. 
Okay, back to the transmission. So now we're gonna come in here. We've got all of our pump bolts out. Everything's all disconnected. Sorry, I did jump ahead on y'all. We want to get our linkage off here for our park. Come here, check this out, Cody. So you want to take this off. If you can't get in there to that bolt, you want to make sure it's in parking, which I think it is. Yeah, so check this out. I'm kind of showing Cody at the same time. You can't get it into the 13. All you want to do is you want to turn it to where, get it in the groove, and we can lock this thing in park. Boom, we can get to our 13 millimeters. If not, you'll strip it every time. That's to y'all out there as well. Then you just want to be careful with this when you're washing your case. Don't bend it or different things because you can, you can have issues. There's our pump. Like I was telling you, here's our sensor. This is our 65. Comes in here, counts this reluctor. What it does is it drops, drops pump pressure at idle. Um, what are you looking for? They're looking for gas mileage and they're looking at any way possible to do it. And that's one of them. So here we just want to look at our pump body. We've got a 13 vein. What I mean that by that is these, these are called veins and there's 13 of them. Yep, everything looks really good. We'll go in there and scotch brought that. Looks like it's there, but it's just a shadow. That's all we're seeing. Same thing on this. It's just a shadow. We'll go in there, rub some Scotch Brite on that. Be a nice brand new surface, ready to go. New pump gears, new kit. We've got everything right here. These are beautiful kits. It comes with everything. You just want to make sure that you don't have any dents. They come boxed up. Um, it's just good to check things. We check everything. We just don't put things in. You never know how they're handled through the manufacturers stuff out of the way on to the neck we get our band anchor out of here so we can get our band out and our drum there we go there you have it band anchor so now we're going to be able to grab everything, pull it out. You have your reverse clutch here. We got a bevel. Just looks old. There. The drum. Drum looks really good. Looks nice and straight. We will go back and check this stuff out with a straight edge. Put it on there. We don't want to see any light in between this drum. What that means is if we have had any light in between, this band is squeezed beyond and it's ruined our drum, so we don't want that. Band, it's black and smoked if you ask. Narrow, we will be putting a wide band in there. Every one of our vehicles get them. Okay, so we're gonna come here to our three, four clutch. And this thing does look like it has the load springs in it, but 
Um, by the way, you look at, you can tell the clutch is fried. And you look in there and see it before I even pull it out. Let's get this thing pulled out. So you're gonna see load springs fall out. And they might not be good. So we're gonna be checking those as well. Three, four, it's gone. Six clutch pack, we will be putting a four clutch pack, or a 14 clutch pack in there called a Z pack. Load, load springs. You know, you can tell we've got a low spring here and a high spring here. So I could tell you these low springs are no good. We will be putting new ones in there. Those are junk. So let's get down here to our forward and our engine braking clutch down in there and your forward sprag. This bearing sits right down in there on the shell. I don't know if y'all have seen that fall off, but set that to the side. You do always want to check your drums because you start getting some high horsepower They'll blow out the teeth, start working on the teeth, or just strip the drum. So we don't have a big high horsepower vehicle here, just letting y'all know. So we got our sprag. And you see here, turns to the left, locks to the right. Turns to the left, locks to the right. Depends how you're holding it too. So just remember that we got a chart that shows us how that stuff goes. Okay, so here, right here we have our forward clutch. Looks old. Doesn't look fried, but looks worn out. It's been used. And then right here we have our two clutch, um, engine brake clutch. When you pull it down, you hear that, mmm, this is a clutch that's coming on. Okay, that bring out of the way. Go in here for our planet intermediate. Guess I'm not gonna be so lucky today. It's like my dad only gets it one time. Come on, work with me. There we go. He makes everything look so easy, guys. He's been doing this 40 years plus. I mean, <laughs> he makes it look so easy. Okay, so we have our planet here. Roller bearing, of course. The biggest part you wanna check, it's not here. A lot of the times where they wear out, it's right here. So 99% of the time, we're changing these out. Oh yeah, you can see it. Can you see that wear, Cody? Yeah. Okay. See, so what that does is that rocks that, makes that rock back and forth. So we'll put a new one in there, get that nice and tight, get fixed up for our customer. Our planet. Check your bearing down in there. Your biggest deal, you wanna check your rollers. Everything seems to be good. We'll double check it after we clean it up. Here's your sprag here. So we'll do an updated, I think this is a single. Single, we'll do a dual, dual cage. Right here, stainless steel rings, dual cage. You can't see the dual, but it's there, I promise. Okay. Get our shell out of there. A lot of times, too, we see a lot of wear right here in the shell. We make sure to get a hardened one. 
that's a that's a must. Um, everybody gets those brutes or um, heavy duty. They're just really really heavy. So when you get that in turning weight, it's it's a big difference. So we like to just go with the hardened uh, teeth here and stay with the factory. Okay. So we've got our lower verse left here. Snap ring. There's our hub. We're going to definitely check that as well. Both sides for any pitting. Nice and tight, but like I said, it's not hardened, so we will be going back with a hardened one. Okay. So we're just going to tap this real quick. we go that's coming this way and that's going that way should there we go splines are really good which that's nice some of them they just fall right out So we have our support here, our roller clutch. You can see it's roller. This is, I think this is a wide one. Yes, this is a wide, um, so this is a good one. And you can put this one in backwards as well. Just remember the spring, always, if you take this apart, Get, get the snap ring out. The spring always pushes the roller up the hill. If you remember that, you'll be good for life. Get some of this out. Last but not least, anti-clunk spring. This thing sits up here. I guess it sits down here. I'm sure y'all have seen it, but might as well show y'all again. It goes right in here, just like that. And then your support goes in there. It keeps everything nice and tight to where it's not rocking back and forth in the case. So here's our low reverse clutch. Looks old but doesn't look terrible. So uh, we got something to work with here. That's, man, that's always a plus. I'm telling you, when they're tore up, guys, it's no fun to mess with them. Everything looks really good. We'll be polishing all that stuff, checking all of our, all of our bearings, our planets. We'll, we'll be double checking them too off camera. Get them all cleaned up, get all the oil off of them and really see how they are. But there's that there. So this is an updated style. They made this real nice and smooth to where they can get that ramp off of here to where they can get that oil on that, get everything soaked really nice. If you look on the, I don't think I have an, an older one but it's a step ramp. It's not nice and smooth. So they definitely, they definitely corrected that. Well, that's not terrible, huh? No, I think we can, yeah, we can work with that, huh, Cody? Yes, sir. Let me try to work this out real quick. My dad, he can always just come in here and grab it. I can't, but you gotta be careful cause you don't wanna mess up the case. There we go. I just get my little pocket head screwdriver in there, just like that. That's the seal on our pump. The, the new ones, it's not on our body no more, our stator, so. Well, there you go. 4L65E tore down here by Trent Crotch. 
Um, Cody Thompson there recording behind the camera. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate you very much. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have got that camera shot today. So we really appreciate you, Cody. Um, this guy has helped us out tremendously here at Team Precision. Um, I don't know what to do without him. I really don't. He's helped me out a lot. Thank you. Yes, sir. I appreciate being able to be here. Learning something new every day. Good. Love it. Well, y'all guys, so y'all know what to do. If you liked it, go hit that subscribe button. Go hit that thumbs up and hit that notification button. And we will see y'all on the next one. Y'all have a wonderful day.